Hello family, I'm Pastor Olalu from Christian Pentecostal Church and um, this week we'll be wrapping up on the shield of faith in the armor of God. Um, so Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 says, Above all, take in the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The Roman shield used at the time of the writing of the letters to the Ephesians was called the uh, scutum. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. I don't speak Owen, but <laughs> it's called the scutum. The shield was rectangular and cylindrical in shape and large enough to cover the, and it, the soldier entirely. Now, the shields were often made of wood um, and covered in animal hide, and when wet, it would extinguish flaming arrows. So, they were designed sp specifically to be able to, you know, be durable. Uh, to withstand arrow attacks, to cover the entire body for full protection, and so that if it was wet, it would extinguish fiery darts or flaming arrows. In essence, such a shield was a blanket of protection for the soldier. Now, the blanket of its protection, that shield for the Christian, is simply faith. Romans 10:11 says, Whoever believes on him, that being Christ, shall not be ashamed shall never have cause to be ashamed. The effectiveness of your shield and my shield of faith is directly proportional to the magnitude of my trust and your trust in God. Let me repeat that. The, effective, the effectiveness of our faith is directly proportional with the magnitude of our trust in God. Now, I've been accused uh, many times of being or teaching and practicing theoretical Christianity rather than realistic, realistic or practical Christianity. What does that mean? Now, you know, I would rather dwell and teach theoretical Christianity believing that God at his word and the truth of who he is and dwell in that real, rather than, sorry, I would rather dwell in theoretical Christianity, believing God at his word, taking him at his word, and believing who he is, exactly how the Bible says, rather than dwell in realistic Christianity or practical Christianity, which looks at the world, accepts whatever comes as is, and diminishes our faith in God by mentally limiting our belief in what we can and will do. A part of that, uh, the simplest, ex simplest, um, example of that is regard to healing and whether God can and will heal. Now in doing this we make our shield of faith thin and flimsy. When we live in what we call realistic or practical Christianity we make our shield of faith thin and flimsy unable to effectively block and quench the fiery darts of the evil one. Now in this day and age I firmly believe that the fiery darts of Satan come in the form of false witnesses causing us to doubt God at his word. So strengthen your shield. Make it thick and impenetrable. How do we do this? Let's uh, read Psalm 27. Let's look at Psalm 27 to find out how. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now David is the example of a man who despite the persecution and turmoil and just plain craziness in his life, his shield of faith remained impenetrable, impenetrable. So let us hear the word of God so as to increase our faith to strengthen our shield. So turn with me, if you will, to Psalm 27. It's the 27th Psalm written by David. As it loads. Psalm 27. Psalm 27, reading from the King James Version. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up on me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war 
shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I all offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses have risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. To strengthen your faith, to strengthen my faith, believe God at his word. David wrote that. He wrote that he would have despaired had he not believed that he would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The moment a fiery arrow penetrates your shield and strikes you, doubt begins to set in. Questioning begins to set in. Believe God. Believe him at his word. Do not despair. Believe that you will see the goodness of the Lord. You will see the goodness of God in this very life. So wait. Wait for and patiently expect to see the deliverance of the Lord. No matter the problem, expect his goodness, recognize his goodness in this life, and he will strengthen your heart. To increase the density of your shield and my shield of faith, there's one more thing. Desire and seek that one thing above all else, to dwell in the very manifest presence of the Lord all the days of your life, to behold his beauty and magnificence in all things, to meditate upon him and upon his word at all times. He has implored you, implored you, he has implored me to seek his face. Crucify your flesh, crucify my flesh and worldly desires. Let your ever response and my ever response be to be, your face, Lord, will I seek always. And when that becomes my and your heart's desire, when that becomes your solitary and my solitary passion, our shield of faith will be impenetrable, strengthened beyond measure, and wet with the living water at all times, easily quenching the fiery arrows, let alone them just bouncing off the shield of faith itself. The attacks will come. The false witnesses will come. The attempt to doubt will come. But be of good courage. Do not despair. Trust that you will see more of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Your salvation is merely the starting point. God bless you. See you next week.